Previously on Kaz, I showed you how to make real CSGO champs with a draw model hook. In this video, we are going to make real CSGO glow ESP using the glow object manager, which will allow you to glow absolutely anything you like. So be sure to stick around. To understand how this all works, we first need to take a trip into the leaked CSGO source code. With a quick search of render glow effects, you'll find the function that renders all of these glow effects within the game. Glow effects are rendered within client mode's virtual function known as do post screen space effects. Keep this function in mind as this is the function we're going to be hooking in order to achieve our glow. Anyway, going a step further and taking a look at the render glow effects function, we can see it firstly checks against the console variable glow outline effect enable, and if that is true, it calls apply apply entity glow effects. Now within this apply entity glow effects function, the game loops through a list of so-called glow objects, determines whether or not they should glow, and then draws the glow objects model with the overwritten dev glow color material, which obviously does the glow that we see in game. If you watched my previous tutorial on chams, that'll look quite familiar to you. Now obviously that was an extreme oversimplification of how CSGO does glow, but it just about covers everything you need to know to achieve real glow ESP in CSGO. So let's summarize what we just discussed. We're going to hook do post screen space effects, which is at index 44 of the iClient mode shared virtual table. Inside of the hook, we are going to loop through the game's glow objects, determine if it is something that we want to glow, and if it is, we'll force the game to glow it. Then we will call the original function, which will do the same, except it'll actually glow all of the entities that we want. I hope this makes sense as a simple overview, so I'll stop wasting your time now. Let's get the base that we'll be using. In the description down below, you'll find a link to my base repository, which is what I'm going to be using using to demonstrate this feature in this tutorial. So either clone the code yourself and follow along with me or use it as a reference. To clone the code, all you need to do is hit the big green code button and download the code as a zipped file. You'll find the zip inside of your downloads folder. You can now extract the based master folder to wherever you like and then double click on the .sln file to open up the project in Visual Studio. Now at the top, you need to change from debug x64 to release x86 and we are ready to get going. So let's do it. We're going to start by hooking the do post screen space effects function. So inside of your hooks.h file under your other hooks, we're going to begin by creating the function type definition as it is in the leaked CSGO source code. This function is not going to return anything so we can make it a void function. The first parameter is going to be the this pointer because remember it is a function in a class after all. And finally, the actual first and only parameter is a const c view setup pointer, but we don't really care about it since it has absolutely nothing to do with glow. So we'll just make it a void pointer in this case because uh, we still do need to pass it through to the original function. Next, we can make a function pointer to store the original do post screen space effects functions location so that we can call it later on. And finally, we can create the prototype of our actual hooked function. Pay attention to the standard call calling convention as it is rather important. Moving into hooks.cpp, inside of the setup function, we can use minhook to place the hook like so by calling mh underscore create hook. The first parameter is the address of the function which of course is index 44 of the client mode table. Next, we can give minhook the address of the function we want to replace the game's function with. And finally, we need to provide a place to store the original function so that we can call it later. Cool, the only thing left to do is to scroll to the bottom of this file and create the definition of our hooked function. Remember, it is located in the hooks namespace. And once again, pay attention to the calling convention. For now, at the bottom of this function, we are just going to call the original function like so by calling do post screen space effects original and passing in our client mode pointer as the first argument. Cool, we should now have a working hook and uh, we are ready to go and get our glow working. So first things first, we're going to make sure our local player is not null and that we are in fact in game to avoid those awesome internal crashes. Now we can use a for loop to loop through all of the glow objects inside of the glow manager like so. Next, we can get the glow object by indexing into the list with the value stored in the i variable. Of course, we're going to use a reference to avoid making a copy and accomplishing nothing. Once we actually have the glow object, we need to make sure that it is in fact used by the game by calling the is used function. And then we're going to make sure that the entity belonging to the glow object is not null because that would be pretty bad. Now we can use a switch statement based on the entity's class ID, which we can get by calling the get client class function to determine what exactly the entity is. The first check we're going to make is to see if they are a player. And if they are, we're going to make sure that they are alive. And then we can see if they are on our team or not. If they are not on our team, that obviously means that they are an enemy. So let's use the set color method of the object to set the entity's glow object to red because 
they are the bad guys after all. Of course, every other player will be a teammate, so let's make them glow blue in the same way, and don't forget to break out of the switch once you are all done. Using class IDs, you can accurately select which entities you want to glow, be it players, ragdolls, bombs, grenades, or even weapons, but I'll leave that to you to figure out. Alright, so at this very moment you should have a fully working glow cheat if you decide to compile and inject your DLL. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll catch you guys in game. Alright, so I've just hopped into game and injected and we can see the entities are in fact glowing. Of course this map doesn't have any teammates so we aren't going to see the other colour but I assure you that it works. Remember, if you want to glow other things like weapons or chickens for whatever reason, look for their class ID and then glow accordingly based on that. Anyway ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video and got yourself some awesome working glow out of it, done the right way. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you did in fact enjoy the video, and of course, massive shout out to my sexy patrons, you guys are fucking awesome. I know I haven't uploaded in a minute, I was busy with life, but I'm gonna try pump out more content soon, so cheers and peace out, I'll see you in the next one.